Hi everybody. Um, this video has a rather sad reason. In November 2019, one of the pioneers of publishing about tank technology passed away. Professor Richard Ogorkovich died in November 2019, aged 93. And um, it's quite possible that many of you, even those who read much about tanks, haven't heard his name. And that's the reason why I wanted to make this video. Because Richard Ogorkovich is a man who was not so present, so so much in the center of attention like many other authors about with, with tank books and um, tank articles or in our times the internet. Um, but he was a most important person in the area of tank technology and the history of tank technology. So I thought I used the opportunity to present him a little bit because he was rather seclusive, so it's, it's hard to find details about his life. I personally never met him. And um, far more important, to point to his work. Um, Richard Gorkowicz uh, was born in Poland, 1926. I hope I pronounced the name, name right, or Gorkowicz, I hope it is. And um, he then moved to Great Britain and worked there for decades in the area of military, armor, tanks, etc. And um, I have a few steps of his biography here. From 1972 to 2006, he was part of the Defense Scientific Advisory Council of the Ministry of Defense. And uh, since 1979, um, he taught at the Royal Military College of Science. Uh, since 1988, he was a visiting professor there. Um, and since 1988-2, he was consulting editor of IHS International Defense Review. And um, thanks to the Osprey publishers for the biography. And um, he published numerous, more rather precisely, countless articles in specific scientific and uh, engineering journals, which is not something that the, the, the broader audience uh, reads. He only, only uh, wrote three books, and uh, I want to present two of them to you. But these are rather important. So um, Richard Gorkovich was a man who worked in the background, who who worked on the on the basics of everything that, for example, we as historians or the, the tank museums rely on. Um, these are the articles. And some of his thoughts, some of his work reach a broader audience. These are the books. And um, I want today to present two of the books to you. Um, I will start with the youngest one, the, or the latest one, um, published in 2015, um, the book from which I stole the biography moments ago. And um, it's called simply Tanks, 100 Years of Evolution. And uh, it's been published by Osprey. It's this. And it's rather untypical for Osprey because it's a hardcover, much text, few photos. The book itself is a perfect entry, a perfect, perfect start if you want to delve deeper into tank history. Um, it's a broad overview about the evolution of tanks in the last hundred years. As such, it's not too specific. Um, it is rather a, a gallery of tank after tank after tank, that something that I would normally call a weak point. Um, but in this case, uh, being Richard Ogorkovich's, um, as we call it in German, Alterswerk, um, a production of old age, of mature age, um, it's rather impressive because it's written very, very calm, very serious, very interesting, very, um, very precise. Uh, so, in spite of being just a gallery of tanks, in spite of being rather thin on the connections to political aspects, social aspects, cultural aspects, which are normally expected today. So, in spite of being, let's put it bluntly, being a conservative classical tank book, it's great. It's a perfect entry because on each side you feel that you have an author here that exactly knows what he's writing about, that really knows what he's writing about, and thus he's allowed to boil down to the essentials, in this case, tank after tank after tank. And apart from that, um, he also found a good balance uh, in the topics. Um, let me see the pages. Um, 
beginning from the invention of the tank, which he sees properly critical, um, to the, uh, the Second World War, to the end of the Second World War, it's 150 pages, which is, I think, let's see it, a little bit, yeah, half the book, which is totally okay. And then follows the Cold War. And in the Cold War, he does something um, very good because um, he looks at the, as he writes it, on the peripheries of the major powers. So um, apart from the usual suspects like um, Sweden, Switzerland, and um, Israel, he also looks at countries like Italy and Argentina and others to broaden the scope and see what they did in the time. Um, so although the, the classical um, one two step of world wars, cold war is uh, obeyed here, it's a rather um, fresh approach to look globally what was invented. And as a bonus, um, in the end, he has an, he calls it appendices, but it's, it's, it's just classical chapters, basically, um, of again, 60 pages, um, in which he uses the classical three points of mobility, firepower, and protection to make summarizing chapters. So there's one chapter about gunpower, and one chapter about protection, and one chapter about mobility. And he takes these topics and makes the the whole ride through the hundred years again. So if you read the book, each tank is uh, represented in, in, in terms of each topic. So sometimes it's hard to follow the parallel threats. Okay, what's happening in protection, what's happening in, in, uh, in, in gunpowder and, and so on and so on. So conveniently, he goes and says, dear reader, look at the appendices if you want to see what gunpowder developed over the full hundred years, take this small summarized boiled down chapter and that's a great service. Um, the book has not too much, but all the necessary sources given at the end. So it's not the, as older and mature scholars often do it, uh, just written down because I have the renome to do so, I have the reputation to do so. No, he gave his sources so we can read for, further, so we can um, take this as a stepping stone and then work our way through the sources. Um, and um, has a nice index as a, um, for, for our convenience. And um, this all in all makes it a great book. Um, it's the perfect entry level textbook for everybody who's serious about tank technology in the last hundred years. So this is great. Uh, and this alone is, is important, but it's not the, the main reason I wanted to make this video. The main reason was his 1997 book in uh, two volumes, Technology of Tanks. Technology of Tanks, as far as I can see, is only buyable at ridiculous prices. It's out of print for a long time, and because it's a fantastic core work of tank technology and tank technology history, um, you only can buy it for laughable sums of money. Fortunately for us and for everybody who speaks German, the Austrians translated it into German in the 90s, uh, in the late 90s, uh, I think immediately 1998, um, and put it into three volumes, three small volumes. These are soft covers. And these, if you can read, are available at eBay and uh, the usual um, places for hefty but not ridiculous sums. Uh, and I will use these um, to explain why this book is so important. Technology of Tanks, written in 1997, sums up neatly, concisely, precisely, and with all the necessary data, graphs, uh, tables, numbers, the basic technology of tanks. That's it, the promise that's given the title is kept. Um, I will just read to you the, um, the, the topics of the three German um, books or volumes. Um, it, these are in the first book, um, History of Development, uh, Armor Protection, Configuration. So after a brief delve into the history of the tank on a whole, it's then how does armor protection work and how does a tank have to be configured um, if you build one. Volume two then is um, the gun, ammunitions, targeting and optics, um, fire control, and tank, or that uh, would be um, um, guided missiles. And volume three is mobility on the battlefield, engines, uh, transmission, 
and everything related to um, suspension tracks um, and everything covering mobility on the ground. So um, if you look at these, um, they are full to the brim with diagrams, with, with formulas, with, um, with calculations, um, with data. Um, they are the, the last obscure source is cited, um, oftentimes journal articles that I can't get my hands on, um, but they are there, that's, so that's my fault, not his. And these technology of tank, tanks volumes are the basic building stone if you want to understand tank technology, if you want to, to talk about it, if you want to maybe teach about it, um, if you want to run a tank museum and are not school job wise, if you haven't had any education in uh, tank building, so to say, this is the book you need to read. So this book, and that's the reason why it, it fetches such, such hefty sums on the, on the second hand market. Um, this is the basic important book if you want to know, if you want to have detailed knowledge about tank technology. And that's, that's the point where Richard Gorkovich really reached out to the audience. As I said, he was a more of a background man, a gray magnificence. But this is the book which he gave to us, to the normal people outside the scientific and engineering community about tanks. And um, that's the book we have to be very thankful to him for. So this book was the main reason why I wanted to tell you who Richard Ogorkovich was and why he was important to the tank community as a whole and to the broader audience, especially with this book. And um, it's very sad that he passed away and I hope um, there's never something good in the death of a person, but maybe it leads to this book being republished and I think he would be very happy to see this happen. Uh, and I would be very happy to see his milestone and tank books be republished and uh, brought to a broad, broader audience because uh, in my mind, in the last 20 years, the, the tank audience broadened, broadened considerably. So this book will be sold many times over now. And maybe this is a reason for some publisher out there to republish it. Thank you very much. Thank you.